even does. Da- Dad is tired. <laughs> <laughs> I am also tired. Daddy's tired. You look great. Yeah. <laughs> I try. Listen, the hair, the hair is literally just because there is so much hairspray in it from yesterday. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna. Yeah. I would like the record to state that I tried to give Curl a compliment. I would, but like I, am, to, I would like. I am a Norwegian. I don't. I don't take those. That is not a currency we operate in. It really isn't. It really isn't. Um, and I, I should know this as a certified Scanda fucker. Welcome to the Yowie Shelf. Welcome. Grab a seat Hello. And relax. Uh, it is September. I don't know how. I don't know how this happened. I'm not ready. This is not okay. It's almost winter again. I don't want to live. I mean, I'm fine. Uh, I've been I've this been is, looking forward. This is not a cry for help. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking forward to this episode. Don't get me wrong, but it's just like I'm I'm just not ready. You know how I get. You know when everyone starts, you know, posting their little tweets or whatever about how oh. Yes. I can't wait for sweater weather, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, listen, I live in a freezing hell. I, I don't want to. Like, you also live in like the frozen north of Game of Thrones. Yeah. So, like, it's- I'm excited for fall and winter because it won't be like 38 degrees Celsius or 100 degrees Fahrenheit. No. And, and we're over here like, well, we barely had summer and now it's going to start snowing again in a month. And I don't want that, you know? There's a TikToker I follow who lives on Svalbard, and she's like, "It is oh, September 6th, and we've had our first snow." And she just sounds, she, she just sounds like a medieval woman who's oh, like, my "The first, God. the first snows of winter have arrived." <laughs> it is. Um, I'm so glad I don't live there. But today we are back. Uh, we had a great time at Citrus Con. We did. Uh, we had a really great time. That panel is up and shared. Uh, let us know if you want me to synthesize guys audio only for that and put it up as a podcast episode um it's two hours long <laughs> <laughs> and it was almost longer because we we don't know what time is and i did not know what time it is because all of the programming emails are in edt and i use cst this is all greek to me i i was just hoping for the best you know like i didn't i don't understand either of those so i was just like well i'm here and that's what matters <laughs> Yeah, Carla just shows up. <laughs> I'm just hoping for the best. I am so grateful for Google calendars that just automatically change the time. I am too. I am too. I don't know what's going on. Absolutely. Uh, I am so glad to be covering this episode because we are finally talking about one of my great loves, Antique Bakery. I'm so excited to be talking about this with you. I am super excited we talked about Antique Bakery. Antique Bakery, of course, manga by Fumi Yoshinaga. Uh, If you've listened to the old show, we talked about it approximately 60 million times. (laughs) And we did a Yoshinaga, like, retrospective, but we ended up mostly just talking about Tyler Perry movies, which is something that we did a lot on the old show. We talked a lot about Tyler Perry. (laughs) As one does, I guess. As as two old black women do. We talked a lot about Tyler Perry. So I'm excited to focus in specifically on Antique Bakery and focus on that series and how it has radically changed how we perceive BL and everything because Antique Bakery runs very, very close into that category of this is actually a sojo that happens to involve gay people. Yep. I'm just going to double check when it was actually published because I forgot to to write that down. I I took notes as I was reading, so I have all my mm-hmm. notes on paper, which I feel was very clever because I can't fucking read them. Uh- <laughs> oh my god. That is- yeah, it what? came out in 2000. Two- oh god, that was so long ago. Yeah. That was so, so long ago. So, so, so by 2000, BL is an established genre, but, but, mm-hmm. but it's still in, this is a shoujo. It's just. Yeah, absolutely. It is very, 
<laughs> yeah, it is very, very firmly seated in the Sojo world with Sojo tropes and uh, Sojo methodology. Yeah. And I always thought that it was published by Juna, you know, but it's actually yeah. a problem here. It's, it's DMP, which is, you know, it's the same, it's the same, but uh, it's a slightly different branch of the same company. Oh, oh DMP. I, I remember that company. <laughs> I was actually published uh, by DMP briefly. They took uh, my two first novels as ebooks. Oh, that's I don't awesome. know. I don't know what happened to that because it just kind of fizzled off. I should probably check up on that because I don't know like, the rights and things. I know nothing. It was a million years ago, and I forgot about it. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so. This is the part of the show where we also say this uh, series is hilariously demonetized. And if you'd like to support us, you can do so on patreon.com, patreon.com slash the Yowie Shelf, where you can support the show, um, get behind the scenes exclusives. Uh, we have a new mascot character that I'm planning on revealing soon. I've been busy. Uh, so patrons, of course, will get to see that first before anyone else. So if you are not subscribed to the Patreon, now is a great time to do it. Yes. Um, with that all being said, on with the show. Yay! <laughs> Let <laughs> us provide some background about Antique Bakery, because I feel like you need to know as much as possible going into it before you can even think about deconstructing it. So if you have not, for whatever reason, read or seen Antique Bakery, full spoilers. <laughs> yes. I think the spoilers are. Yes. I think the spoilers are necessary because it's not a very linear telling at all times, is it's, it? It's not, and so many of the spoilers are like vital to characterization. Yeah, like you need this information, and it makes every character decision retroactively make sense. So, full spoilers for a manga that's twenty three fucking years old. <laughs> oh my god. That is my favorite thing about like movie and like video game YouTubers when they'll like cover like old, old, old movies. And there's always like someone in the comments who's like, how dare you spoil the first Star Wars? And it's like movie that has been out for 50 years. But it's like, I think maybe not Star Wars. I don't think you have any, yes. you don't have an excuse for some of that. Right. But right. but with, with some things, I think that, you know, it just, it gets so and I'm using air quotes, old, mm -hmm. that it has been inaccessible to a younger audience. Mm -hmm. And so they will be spoiled because mm -hmm. they, ha they have no, there's no way to access it. Like I, right. I read, I full on read Antique Bakery for the first time for this episode because I haven't right. read it until recently. So that's quite fun. But yeah, it is wild. And, and, Spoiler. And Antique Bakery did not come out in the US till like 2010. Mm. So Let's go over a brief synopsis. Antique Bakery is a sojo manga with queer themes about a trauma-filled sack of bishonen named Tachibana. His first name is either Keisuke or Keiichiro. Keichiro. No one has made a concrete decision. It's Keiichiro. That's what it says in my volumes. It is also occasionally Keisuke. <laughs> okay. Go on. No one knows the answer and Fumi Yoshinaga won't fucking tell us. Uh, he decides to open up a Western-style bakery. He ends up hiring his old high school friend, Yusuke Ono, who is literally the best boy and had confessed his love to Tachibana in school, only for Tachibana to literally call him the F-slur. <laughs> oh, he I starts love, baking. I, <laughs> yes. I'm trying not to interrupt, but I, I think we should all take the term high school friend with a great High school song. friend. <laughs> they were not they, friends. <laughs> okay. High school acquaintance yeah, that he called you. the thank F you. slur. <laughs> that he calls the, the full on F slur. Uh, Ono starts baking. They quote unquote make up uh, because Tachibana was a dick in school. Uh, some time has passed. They meet a boxer with bad eyesight named Eiji. Uh, Eiji shows up since the aforementioned bad eyesight means he can know. No longer be a boxer he throws everything into baking because he really likes ono's cake that is not a euphemism he is really just excited about cake 
he is obsessed with his cake. This boy. That is, yeah, that is, that is not a euphemism. Shockingly, he is literally just very excited about dessert. I mean, the only reason he was okay with giving up boxing was because it meant he could eat more cake. Like this yeah, boy. Yeah, he was like, I don't have to worry about a weight class. Fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So eventually we get to learn that Tachibana is super rich and his full on manservant named Chikage, who is the I best in cinnamon roll, uh, shows perfect. up and immediately falls in love with Ono. Like uh. Sojo moment, the frame freezes. There are fucking cherry blossoms and sparkles. Like full on has a doki doki. I am in love with this man. <laughs> Chikage, who has never had an impure thought in his life. <laughs> Despite the fact looks... that he surprisingly has a child. But <laughs> we're gonna talk about consent <laughs> issues. Uh, uh, more about Tachibana's past is come to light, which to be fair is incredibly fucked up. Along the way, we meet a bunch of characters that just super love cake, and we see a lot of character growth from Ono Chikage, Eiji, and even Tachibana. Oh, and a perverted Frenchman shows up, non-cons the fuck out of Ono, and Chicago is a sperm donor dad. That is a very good summary. <laughs> this this series is <laughs> it's funny because like it is literally only four volumes. It's four volumes. And there it's is 12 so, episodes. There is so much happening. And it's it radically it's ramps up, like, especially if you're watching the anime. Like, the first, like, three episodes are absolutely fucking nothing. They're just filler. There's some dumb, vapid girls. And then, like, four to six, okay, we're getting a little bit of drama. But then literally, like, 10, 11, and 12, all of the drama happens in once. Because yeah, you get I the episode where they meet... Ono's horrible fringe boyfriend. You get the one where we reveal that Chikage is a dad by the female version of Yuki Eri. <laughs> she, yeah, I, I literally just saw that that episode that, this morning. I think it's episode nine, and yes. because I haven't seen, I haven't finished it, so I have three episodes left, and. Mm -hmm. I was like, like, just like you said, because the first few episodes are very, you know, they're very like slice of life. They're very chill. Yeah. And then I'm like, yeah. all of a sudden, the French man is there. I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. The French man yes. ruins everything. Like he is the <laughs> plot device to radically shift the entire narrative of the series. Because the last like from really like eight to 12 is just an escalating nightmare of trauma and absolute bullshit. <laughs> it's. It's, yeah, uh, no spoilers yet, because we're going to get into this, but that Frenchman, he is awful. I love he that Frenchman. Of course you do. He is terrible. I love that, I love that no, Frenchman. No. I love that. I, I said I am the, most very... the most problematic thing I think I have ever said is still relating to that Frenchman. I think, you know, I'm looking forward, I think, maybe to hearing your reasonings for this, because he is arguably terrible. And I genuinely think I like Toma better. <laughs> okay, first, okay, first of all, to go back to our conversation where you said I, you wish I ran Twitter instead of Elon Musk, bar on the ground. <laughs> so you don't, so a character you objectively hate. <laughs> but see the difference. Here's the difference. Like I yes. said in my updated panel at CitrusCon, yes. I love yes. to hate Toma. I do yes. not have any feelings of love towards John Baptiste. Like, none. I want to punch him in the you face. You will not take the name of Jean Baptiste Heavens in vain. Uh, <laughs> God. Oh, we're off to a great start. Uh, you will not take the name of Jean Baptiste Heavens in vain. That man could have, I can show you the world to Yusuke Ono, and Ono said no. You know, and then every time. <laughs> I have to take a double take every time I hear uh, Ono's full name because I keep thinking yes. of the voice actor Daisuke Ono because it's like Yusuke Ono, yes. Daisuke Ono. I'm yes. like, wait, what? No, yeah, it's not the I, same person. There's a reason why I almost never use first names for Antique Bakery uh, because they're stupid. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with AG. He's perfect. But that's also interesting because everyone's like, it's like because they say Chikage and then they say mm -hmm. uh, Ono. And Tachibana, mm -hmm. but then Eiji mm -hmm. is Eiji. They they don't use really the say child. Panda. 
yeah, they don't say Kanda. He's a word, child. So like, he's, yeah, he's a, and he, I love him. He's a fetus he's a, in comparison. Listen, Amanda had to deal with me coming into our <laughs> into our private chat screaming <laughs> as I started reading because. Okay, so there's AJ, right? And like his name yes. is AJ, and he's a sweet cinnamon roll who likes cake. Yes. But then there's this yes. one illustration where he's literally wearing AJ, banana fish AJ's outfit. Yes. Like the, and I'm like screaming. Yeah, and Crow <laughs> has like a full like Vietnam flashback <laughs> in our private chat where she's just melting down. I like, love what? him. I love he's, him. He is, and Amanda was you know like, what? welcome to AJ hell. Yeah, well, welcome to AG Hell. It doesn't get and, better. And then I started watching the anime, and he's voiced by Mamoru, and I screamed some more. <laughs> We've had multiple screamings over voice actors. Yeah. Uh, so but, yeah, we're gonna. I love him. So we're gonna approach this uh, in the way that we approach most retrospectives. We're gonna talk about the good. We're gonna talk about the bad. And by bad, we mean like. Things that have not aged well or things that, like, we cannot rationalize. So bad doesn't mean bad, like, you're a bad person. It's not an indictment. It's not a judgment. It's in just that case, these are... Yeah, Amanda that, in would that be case. in jail. <laughs> Fuck you. Oh, did, did you see what I posted in a uh, Discord about the new rules for incest that aunties dropped? Oh, I no, I didn't see it, but I think I know the one because I retweeted something like that this morning. Let me check. Auntie's dropped a new definition of incest. <laughs> Turns out it's everything. <laughs> no, you don't say. Oh my god, there's a really hot picture of you in Discord. Oh, thank you. I was a. <gasps> that was me when I was a minor. Oh no. <gasps> what did you have to say that? God you damn sexualized it. Minor- <laughs> <laughs> You didn't have to call me out, Amanda. God damn it. It's like, wait, I was underage. We are under- is- oh, no, I found it. Okay, I found it. Yeah, wait. it was way up. But like, yeah, they've released new rules for incest that include childhood friends, soulmates, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. co-workers, parents that knew each other, born on the same day, experimented on, belonging to the same organization, religion, <laughs> same race or ethnic group, similar powers, marginalized people in the same group dating. <laughs> I can't. I can't. You know what's not like- on that list? Actual incest. fucking incest. <laughs> <laughs> Actual fucking sibling incest. <laughs> oh my god. Somehow everything is on that list but actual cousin fucking <laughs> I think that this is literally the first thing I saw when I woke up this morning. And I was like, what is happening? If it makes you feel better. So that photo that was in Discord, it was my senior photos. I was 17, age of consent in America. So you are not fully, you are not gross. And it is a good picture of me. I looked so thin. (laughs) That's, that's, what? I was so thin. Yeah, I was so thin. I also, uh, so my senior portraits were taken at glamour shots, like literally like in the mall glamour shots. Um, and this I got to pick my. Very new. Yes. This in the mall glamour shots. Uh, and I got to pick my outfits. I'm wearing a dress that literally makes me look like I am in, I'm going to a Phantom of the Opera flash mob. Can I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the direction was for that shoot. All I know is that there was a fake brick wall. (laughs) It was like a tarp. It was a tarp brick wall. And I'm dressed like I am going to some flash mob for Evanescence or Phantom of the Opera. (laughs) You know, I'm just reeling because we don't we don't do senior portraits. So the whole concept is just foreign to me. Senior portraits are a rite of passage. And there's like four variants. There's one in my school shirt. There's one of me wearing a cherry like 1950s style dress, which we're going to put Aruka in for our Mad Men Aruka Kakashi <laughs> fic. Which we obviously has to have to write ourselves because no one has volunteered yet. Yeah. Hello? We obviously have to do it. So... so. He will he will go in that dress that I bought at Torrid in two thousand and six. Um, 
Yes. That black and white lace dress from Hot Topic that I purchased in 2005 for my sophomore homecoming that I did not retire until 2014. <laughs> <laughs> and I am so airbrushed that my beauty mark no longer exists <laughs> and I'm a different shade of brown than the rest of my skin. <laughs> I look like those early gross photos of Jean Benet Ramsey. <laughs> oh my god, those are haunting. Those That's are so I have also, to go I, back and look yeah. at it now. I was fully a pageant child, so like there are images of me that look straight up like, oh, this is black jean benet ramsey what the fuck so i, mean, I realize i'm sorry we're still on the portrait but looking at it are. now i i do yes. realize that i can't actually see the dress but you're holding this bouquet of the roses. Fake I think flowers it's, the flowers is what makes it look like you're going to, to the, 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 the flowers. fakest <laughs> dollar store flowers that have ever existed yeah they, the, they did look a little strange the, the fakest fucking dollar store Walmart floral section flowers that have ever existed. Uh, okay, so we're going to talk about the good. Because <laughs> we could be here talking about my senior portraits all day. <laughs> it's a good portrait. Listen. Thank you. Join uh, our Discord. You may also see Amanda's beauty. <laughs> uh, the manga covers were scratch and sniff. You know... I realized that my secondhand ones are actually also scratch and sniff. That, not that it yes. helps, because you know I don't have a sense it's of smell. Years old, yeah. and they're twenty years old, but <laughs> but they do. That's really neat. That's, it's so like there's like a featured dessert on each cover, and if you scratch it, it smells loosely like whatever is being baked. Yes, Corolla has an example. Um, scratch so like there's like a really really chocolatey one. There's like strawberry. One. Is that annotated? Yes. You, you take this so seriously. I love you. I take this very seriously. <laughs> like, is that, like, is that annotated? Uh, oh, yeah. But, like, the cover. Really, really good annotation. Sometimes it's just a heart, but it's just. <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing because, like, you know, this came out, you know, oh, God. I mean, I think the manga was out like 2008, 2009 in the US. So, but like, this is remarkable technology for a manga, and yeah, like, it's really wild. did, a, yeah, and like, really did a great job ingratiating what is the point of this series, which is fifty percent cake porn. Yeah, and I just want to say, I may not have read Antique Bakery before, but mm -hmm. I have read nineteen volumes. I've not read the most recent one of What Did You mm -hmm. Eat Yesterday? And yes, F Yoshinaga Fumi. Is a foodie. She just really loves writing just, about food and cooking. Yes, and, and glossy images of it, like just good. And I and I love her for that. As as, as someone who has spent a lot of time baking and whose love language is dessert, <laughs> antique bakery feels like it was like genetically engineered for me. Yeah, so I, I do. I do prefer. Yes, I do prefer the desserts to the extremely detailed recipes in What Did You Eat Yesterday, which is like there are like five recipes in each volume and it takes up like the bulk of each chapter. I sometimes skim them. Um, there, I think in the anime, there were some, like not really like recipes, but like at least like more like detailed information yeah. about the dessert that were listed because a lot of them are French. And unless you've spent a lot of time like in a French bakery, a lot of these don't make any sense, especially to Westerners. <laughs> Like, they make sense to me because I'm a bougie asshole and I know what a financier <laughs> is. Uh, financier is the pastry that Jean Baptiste asked Ono to make as a test. Yes, yes, I do remember. I recently I read it, I and I, I this may be me having read. Hold on to your chair. I'm going to mention them. This may be me having read one too many Kin Porsche fanfics, but somehow. I now associate that dessert with the old fashioned drink because it's like they, they sound like they would go together in my head because of the names, literally based on names. Uh, that, that's a possibility. Also, you, you did bring up a great point. If you have seen or read Bartender, uh. Auntie Bakery has a very, very similar style where it's like, here is this main theme item 
that happens to fix everyone's trauma. Like the episode's <laughs> about a gin and tonic, but the gin and tonic is really some girl's relationship with her dad. <laughs> yeah, that actually sums up Antique Bakery pre pretty well, even though right. I just took a note where it's like Tachibana at the end of volume four being like, I haven't gotten over anything. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> we're, we're not there yet. No. Uh, you made a great point, which is this is truly genre blending. This is, yeah. I, you know, it's easy to say it's Sojo and to walk away, but there, there is literally something for everyone in Antique Bakery. Yeah. And it's like, because the one thing I did remember, we're going to talk about that or I, I will let you talk about it because I can't remember it but the only experience with Antique Bakery that I had from before apart from knowing about it was that I'd seen the live mm. action movie um, yeah and, which we're not going to talk about <laughs> yet yet <laughs> And and um, but I do I did remember like the mystery aspect, so it's very interesting. Yeah, it's like there's because it's a shoujo and it's like a it's like a yeah. cooking manga, but then also there's this whole ass murder kidnapping mystery in the background. Right, it's, it's everything. Right, there's a whole ass like murder mystery, true crime story that's happening in the yes. background. No um, wonder we like it so much. Like the episode dedicated to Ag being a boxer really accurate and feels like a weird like sports anime for like 10 minutes like, also i yes. didn't need to google detached retinas but i did and i have regrets thanks ag it's also just really really sad because like it makes sense that like yeah he's been hitting the head so much yeah eyes but just don't work <laughs> i i hurt <laughs> like that does not sound good it, it's not but you know he's living a comfy life now just making cakes um yeah. So it is truly genre bending, and Fumi Yoshinaga is great at that. Um, if you've read things like What Did You Eat Yesterday, Oku is another example of that, where like Oku had something for everyone. I'm Oku made that. it. It's beautiful. Oku literally was like anyone like across the aisle could agree. Like, yeah, Oku's good. Mm. <laughs> and Antique Bakery. It was a little bit like, and you know, obvious parallel to obvious. It reminded me of like when Gravitation first came out, that there was enough in Gravitation to really s loop anyone in. You could focus mm -hmm. on just the music part. You could focus on just the gay part. You could focus on like any other. Sure. The comedy is great. Listen. <laughs> you know, you I could focus on any of those individual parts. <laughs> Amanda has no soul, apparently. I I don't. I sold it in high school to write gay <laughs> fic better. This is actually true. You've told yeah, me. I, no, yeah, I, of, of course I don't. Amanda's soul is obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else is new? Uh, the animation for the 2010 anime uh, was experimental, much like Fooly Cooly. And I have heard some people don't like it. I think it's fantastic <laughs> i don't think i mean i don't think it's that experimental like the opening definitely the opening reminds the opening me is. you know with the pop-up figures it reminds yes. me of of the of the fifth dvd of katakano when when mm -hmm. when gainax ran out of money and everything is literally like paper cutouts but mm -hmm. um but as for the the main episodes i don't think it's that experimental i think it's pretty like Similar yeah, I mean, to it, things that came out that era. Yeah, it definitely does like conventionality yeah. out, but like it is glossy in a way that a mm. lot of anime weren't during that time. Yeah, that, is true. that started, is true. Like, because again, like, so anime came out in 2008, Americans got it in 2010. I remember this because I was in college. Um, I think it started at like 2010 trend where like everything just looked like it was shot through. Remember those old filters where it was just like hearts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything just looks like it's shot through like this weird gossamer filter. Yeah, because it, it has so like this, it has like this hazy kind of yeah. like pastel palette almost. It's like. Right, like it is, it is aggressively glossy. And mm. I remember like my former best friend watching it and he's like, I I don't know how you process like this much color. I don't know how you're looking at this. You don't have a <laughs> migraine. I don't know what's going on. And 
I think that that experimentation works. I I'll liken it to FLCL Fooly Cooly because Fooly mm. Cooly was a studio got new animation software and said YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and history. And the rest we got of Fooly Cooly. Which right. is amazing. Um, <laughs> right, which is fantastic. And then Toonami keeps trying to ruin it. What no one doing? asked for a fourth Fooly Cooly. No one asked for that. <laughs> I don't know why you guys decided that that's what we needed. Stop it. Oh. <laughs> So I really, really liked the animation style. Mm. I think the opening and the closing being inversions of each other is mm. very, very cute. Uh, I love that Tachibana's ringtone is <laughs> Life Goes On Side D. <laughs> <laughs> I yes. think that's the cutest. That is one of those stupid little anime things that makes me so happy. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, his phone ringtone is the closing theme song. Yeah. Uh, yes. I I have a real soft spot for that animation style. Um, and there's like, because it is so glossy and like artificial, I feel like it ages a lot easier than like, so like mm. I do, while I don't like a lot of the super, super CG anime of right now, I, insert me complaining about Trigun Stampede. <laughs> I can't, ag I can't agree that like going back to some of the, and when I say old, I mean old, not 2010. We're talking like 1980s, 1970s, 1990s, mm. where, yeah, like I can understand where if you are used to nothing but yeah, going back to like 98 cell style was like, what meth was everyone on? <laughs> Yeah, it's like I did um, when I did the quiz at Turukon this year. You know, I tried mm -hmm. to blend, I tried to blend, you know, the old and the new and all kinds of genres. Right. And because, um, why do I not remember the name of it? What you know with Lum, you know the um, uh, what did say yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because that is, you know, because it has a remake now, I obviously right. went and used the opening from the original. Right. And like the 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 expression on the kids' faces, because like it's so different. It's radically like, it, different. It's so different. And like the palette and like the mm -hmm. you know, everything. And the saturation, and so, everything. Yeah, the saturation. And I think when I started watching Antique Bakery um i had like for a brief moment like obviously we are seasoned we we have seen a lot i go back and watch like old stuff all the time but it's like Same. when you're used to watching you know everything is so crisp these days you know everything mm -hmm. is so even if you watch things that are in different styles that they, they you know mm -hmm. the quality obviously is very different right and so for like, like the first moment i was like whoa this is very different and then i was like okay yeah I'm, 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 yeah I'm, you I'm, do I'm, settle I'm, into it and i yeah, you do settle into it. I think also, like, because I mean, think about the anime that we had gotten hither to that point. Mm. Inuyasha might as well have been filmed in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can't, I can't speak to that. Inuyasha but, um... is literally the darkest fucking. Animal. Like, I get that y'all are in a forest. Does someone have a lamp? <laughs> someone. No. No, I would have a fucking flashlight. <laughs> you know, Yasha is the darkest anime I've ever seen. So, like, I think that there is like a timelessness to how artificial and soft it looks. Mm -hmm. Like it, and it isn't quite as garish as some of the jumps between like Cell and that mm -hmm. really, really weird 3D. I because, like, hate that. Yes, I hate that so much. It's like, well, I, like I always come back to really thinking. Yeah, but I keep thinking of like when you when you mention like weird 3D, like literally the first mm -hmm. thing I think of is D and Angel. And they would have like everything is like traditionally 2D, and then you have the weird right. fucking trains. I'm like, why are the trains three? I hate it. It's <laughs> right. Or like I know Hitalia did this where like the first two seasons in the movie of Hitalia were done like traditional cell because the God, manga webcomic. Paint it, paint it white. <laughs> uh, and Prussia sings the best song about himself. <laughs> I, I completely blocked that out. I watched that. Prussia sings the best character song that I have ever heard. And it is literally just him saying how great he is. <laughs> for like four Prussia. minutes and ten seconds. I just want to point out that my favorite song from Hitalia is a tomato song. 
I love I the love delicious it. tomato song, and I, I still know it. all the lyrics. I'm the same, same. I also like World Ondo, but like uh, the tomato song, yes. Um, I also love "Excuse Me, I Am Sorry" by Japan. We're not doing a Hitali episode yet. Uh, God, we're gonna do a Hitali episode. I comment like we... down below if you yeah, comment below if you want us to do a Hitali episode. God. So there's something that I think ages really, really well about this style. Now, if you have never seen it before. And you look at this style and are like, what fucking lace do they have over the camera that everything <laughs> looks desaturated and pastel? And you don't like that? I'm not going to fight you over it. If this was me like 15 years ago, probably would have fought you on it. Today, no. I'm not going to fight anyone on it. I think it's great. I think mm. that helps it remain timeless. Uh, but I'm not here to argue with anyone who, especially if you are a more modern fan looking mm. at this and being like what the fuck is this palette yeah i i, I, I personally think it's very soothing yeah. i think it's relaxing yeah. to look at it's very it is it is and i will say so yoshinaga has the same problem that maki murakami has where her faces all blend together i really recommend seeing the anime for this because i remember at least like first readings i <laughs> could not always tell characters apart I didn't struggle as hard with Antique Bakery as I have with mm -hmm. some of her other titles. Like, mm -hmm. what did you eat yesterday? Sometimes I'm like, what? Isn't what? Oh, it's very love. Lovers in the night is fully like I don't know who's talking. <laughs> I don't know. Like, especially in the scenes where, like, during sex, the butler removes his glasses and it's like I no longer know who speaker is. Yeah, like, listen, some <laughs> people just need to have some sort of identification like keep the yeah, glasses I don't, on. I don't yeah keep those glasses on during sex i know it's like the 1700s and those are hard to come by but i don't know who's who anymore <laughs> <laughs> but i also really like that you know she sometimes um in the manga uh, i mean it mm -hmm. does happen in the anime as well but you know she sometimes mm -hmm. reverts to that you know her own very very on brand style of of super deformity or like the chibi characters yes. like she does yeah. them in such a unique way that is just so uniquely her and i think that that is so charming yeah. and and it's one of those things that like i mean not to do like great author shit i think if anyone else tried to do that i'd be radically angry <laughs> her chibis are very weird they but are it so fit, strange but it fits her like weird oeuvre yeah, so, like what? Like, like what is that face shape, and why do I just what are it chins? So simply? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are chins? What is forehead? Like, but I feel like yeah, like if I saw that in another series, I'd be like, yeah, what drugs is everyone on? <laughs> but <laughs> where can I find some? <laughs> oh <my God laughs> but. For her, it works, especially because there's so much detail on everything else. Mm. There's so much detail in the cake. There's so much detail. The cakes are insane. Yeah. I mean, manga is great. Anime, I think, is the way to go just for, like, that glossy, like, just stylized food. If you like desserts mm. at all, like, this is very high up there. Not um, going hungry, though, because you... Not going hungry. <laughs> the... Fucking voice acting. Listen. <laughs> All hail our lords and saviors. I mean, firstly, Mamoru, who shows up. Mamoru. I mean, not that that should be surprising, because especially no. in the early, you know, 2000s, early mid 2000s, he was in everything. That's you it. couldn't Mama escape. Yeah, you I'm can't sure escape Mamoru that man. Just like lived in some like in one of the recording booths. <laughs> yeah, like I was I was literally thinking about this yesterday, like how he has probably worked with every single other voice actor out there. Like yes. there's no voice actor that has not worked with Mamoru because he's been yes. in everything and he is amazing and we love yes. him. Oh yes. my god. Absolutely. Yes. So <laughs> Mamoru makes an appearance. Uh that's for Eiji, even though in the drama CD he is voiced by Seki Tomokazu. <laughs> You don't understand. I need to get my hands on these CDs. Who is, of course, the voice of Suichi Shindo. <laughs> uh, 
I'm sorry. I'm just I, like I'm just making the, squeaky noises at this point. The the message that I received in all caps is that Cosby Eco you know what? Yeah, no, but I was like, and it wasn't even a question because the first it was like the first syllable out of his mouth, I was like, oh, Kazuhiko, my love. <laughs> and then, Kazuhiko, then I, my love. I love that man. I love him. Please. Kazuhiko <laughs> Inoue, my love. Also, Yuki Eddie. Uh, the drama CDs bring together Kazuhiko Inoue and Sekitoma Kazu, which. I, I know that we are not supposed to talk about gravitation in this episode more than we already have. But can more I just than we already have. Out, but can I just point out that my dream is for them to bring together Tomokazu Seki and, and Kazuhiko Inoue and do one of the Georges. Like, please, can someone just make this happen? I need it. I will die. <laughs> Carry on. I'm fine. It was, are you? It was a, no. <laughs> are you? I'm having a full-on meltdown. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like it's it's really fascinating. Like the voice acting is so strong. Everyone sounds great. The use of dialect and accent is phenomenal. Uh, they did that thing that a lot of like this era manga did. And I hate to trash talk English VAs, especially now. I didn't. I'm the biggest English VA sim, <laughs> like 2000 nine down anything after like 2010 i don't know what the fuck any of you are doing um <laughs> but they I, did can, I can't speak. Really, i haven't that's I don't nothing but they really spent a lot of time learning the language in this case french which is really hard and it makes all of the pronunciation so much better i know hitalia did this ex like extensively where a lot of the character actors learned their languages so they didn't sound as foreign or as heavily accented in what in the so, english dub uh in the in the japanese okay yeah because i don't i had french for three years and i don't speak it to save my life uh and but i i will say it japanese like speaking a different language from mm -hmm. Japanese is hard because of the intonation and everything. So so exactly. it is definitely one of the better examples of yes. you know them speaking a foreign language. Like when they when they because there is a lot of French and there is a lot of French. And I am so grateful because you know one thing is reading, you know, reading mm -hmm. the manga. I don't speak French. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to pronounce the names of any of these I desserts. Can, I can pronounce so, these things. Like fucking thank you to the voice actors for saving my ass. Right. Uh <laughs> Right, but, like there are whole ass good. pieces of dialogue in French that are just in French, right? Mm. And Tachibana and Jean Baptiste have a dick measuring contest in French. This is true. Which and then is... there's the, the the when when Ag because that that happened in uh, the last episode I saw I think Ag mm -hmm. goes to the French class and I am yes. just baffled by how he is in this French class to learn French mm -hmm. and the French teacher is exclusively speaking in french so explaining male and female pronouns in french and i'm thinking if they don't know the difference between il and l and you're explaining all of this in french how are they learning anything <laughs> i mean he later goes on to fuck that teacher so i don't think it matters i mean he later he later shacks up with constance so i don't think it matters <laughs> constance is a character She's, interesting. She certainly is. She certainly is. <laughs> also, the time that Aji was willing to throw himself to Jean Baptiste because Jean Baptiste taught Ono yes. how to bake, and Aji yeah, he is was like, "I'll I give him let, my body." Yeah, right. I will let Sensei Sensei fuck me, and Ono best reaction. Don't say that. He will take you up on it. <laughs> I mean, but but you know, Jean Baptiste brings out a lot of that in people because that also makes Tachibana actually want to offer his body to Ono to keep him in the bakery. So Literally, like the, the, the worst the worst Frenchman arrives and everyone is willing to drop their pants. It's, like, look at, it's fine. I will go gay because of this Frenchman yeah. in in I different will... ways, in very different yeah. ways. <laughs> <laughs> Literally everyone is willing to drop their fucking pants because Jean Baptiste saunters in. And he does in <laughs> fact saunter in with a very he big bouquet saunters. of yeah. Literally fucking saunters. Oh my god. Uh the bad. 
so I am not big on things like autism coding because I think like that's a really, really weird way to ascribe almost too much agency or a lack of agency to fictional characters. Mm. But we need to talk about consent in Chikage because Chikage is older than Tachibana by like several years and yes. is consistently framed as being like low intellect and naive. None of that is explained with a diagnosis, but it is very, very clear that he is definitely a few crayons short of a box. Yes, but there, there is no box. And, yeah, and I, it's, it's, I, it's just a crayon. I love him. Please. I love him. If, too. if he was my, if he was a crayon, he'd be my favorite shade because he's wonderful. But that I man. Feel- I feel like he'd be the macaroni and cheese crayon that everyone in America <laughs> tried to eat. <laughs> I don't think we had that one here. Uh, the, the, the color is macaroni and cheese and it is the worst yellow. And I hate yellow, but it is the a, worst yellow. This, are these are Crayola ones with the, yes. yeah, with yes, the yes. names? Yes, yes. yes. I, and the built-in sharpener in the back. I had a I had a, an online friend once who used to call me Crayola because they couldn't pronounce my name. I hate <laughs> and that was kind I of hate it. I hate Americans. <laughs> I thought it was cute. I hate Americans. Uh, but regardless of what you ascribe this to be with Chicago, it is very, very clear that there's a lot that just goes over his head. Yes. Which is but one I, of the reasons so why, hard. yeah, like his relationship with Ono is so like considered to be pure is that Ono typically meets him at his level. Ono mm. isn't trying to make him do anything. So it's Chikage who is initiating. It's Chikage who wants to do these things and is explaining himself and explaining his feelings, which makes sense until you reach the episode where we learn that Chikage is a father to an equally dim girl named <laughs> Kaideko. <laughs> and, 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 and Deko, where I, I I put in a I, I put in a note that is largely referring to Deco because th- yeah. yeah there are some things there, uh but but we'll get to that but yeah no she and was, I say um, and, and I do not say equally dim like being rude everyone describes her as dim she I is- mean what is it Sakurako says the 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 female Adiyuki she says that well imagine <laughs> with with Chicago's looks. And my brain, what a child that could be. And then, unfortunately, <laughs> she got Chicago's looks and Chicago's brain. Uh, so, Sakurako is an aging female writer who eats cigarettes and wears yes. glasses. She is literally Yuki Airy in female form, and I have never loved a woman more. Um, she is uh, terrifying. She realizes that she is approaching her prime and is like, I want a child. How she meets with Chikage, no one knows. Because Chikage should have been in the Tachibana complex watching over Tachibana because he's been having nightmares since he was 10. (laughs) So I don't know when he was released from duty at Sakurako. I guess trapped him in a box using Reese's pieces. (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. I'm going to check because I do have... (laughs) Where she trapped him. Where she traps him in a box that's held up with a stick and a string. Oh, no. <laughs> with a bunch of Reese's pieces. My poor man. <laughs> but, I mean, you're not. You're not wrong. So we don't know how Sakuraka meets Tachibana, but she goes out of her way to sleep with him to completion so that she can have a child. Uh. That and is then, yes. And then you know proceeds to let him take care of the baby because she wasn't very good at the whole mother. Proceeds to let everyone else take care of the baby and then occasionally drop her off with Tachibana uh, with Chikage because Chikage also is not good for the baby. So it's yeah. Tachibana who does a lot of raising of Kaideko. I think that that is quite precious. It's like she has two dads it is very and they're both yeah. fairly uh, yeah. yeah, between the three parents she has, <laughs> there's almost half of a parent. Oh my she god! She has she has three parents that almost make up one parent. No, see, it says here. It says here. 
I always wanted to have a child. So just when I was thinking mm -hmm. that any man would do as long as he had sperm, I was invited by a mutual friend to, to, of Keiichiro's to the Tachibana family's traditional go. New Year's party. And that's where I met Chicago. And then... There we go. And okay. then she just, the, literally the only thing it says after that pretty much is like there's a there's a thought bubble where she looks at him for the first time and she thinks he doesn't look very bright but he does look like he's got some lively sperm and then i guess kind of will happen it is a... <laughs> do you ever just look at a guy and go i bet he's got lively sperm <laughs> like, look just look at you'll do <laughs> I mean, he's beautiful. Please understand he's that I was not the same thought, but the, but you know, he just appeared, and I went, "Oh, <laughs> I love him." But yeah, Sakurako fully looks at him and is like, "You'll do." Uh, yeah. So there is a very, very weird consent issue because then when Chikage later talks about the experience, he doesn't seem to grasp that sex happened, just that he felt good, and that now there's a kaideko. <laughs> And he loves her. Like he's he loves her to death. <laughs> and that's something that to this day, and I don't know why, has all like out of all the things that have aged poorly, that is the thing to me that the further I get away from it, the more <laughs> I'm like, this man didn't consent, did he? I and I, you know, when I <laughs> at first when I looked when I looked at the outline. And I was like, mm -hmm. but because because when it says consent is issues with Chikage, I immediately thought of the scene with him and Ono where right. he completely freaks out because he makes a move and Ono is drunk. And then he pulls back right. and he's like, because you can't consent and I can't do this right. to you. And Ono's like, what the hell? Because Chikage is a consent king, actually. Yes. And then yeah. that makes me wonder, doesn't it? A little bit. <sighs> So, yeah, that's one of those things that, like, I promise you, when I was 20 watching this, I had no questions. But, like, the older I get and the further away that I get from it, the more I'm like, can, can he consent? Oh Is my God. consent? You know what I just pictured in my head? <laughs> You're going to hate me. Just I am. Sa Sakurako. And then Yoshiki Kitazawa shaking hands because it's like the same. They would be they, they'd be best friends. It'd be like one of those like Soviet propaganda posters. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and, exactly. and, and it's like and it's like here are these kids that should not exist by no. any means. No, but <laughs> here they are someone take responsibility and then somehow they ends up they end up with these parents who are just trauma sacks yeah oh my god where yeah it's he's she's literally riku kitazawa of just here is this child of inexplicable origin with a dumb as bricks mom <laughs> <laughs> and a trauma riddled dad <laughs> She's, liter <laughs> she's literally Riku Kitazawa. <laughs> oh my god! I mean, can, like, they, I need Yoshinaga and Murakami to like come together and like do a, like a family therapy series. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> yeah, I need that. I need that Soviet propaganda poster of Yoshiki Kitazawa <laughs> and Sakadako like shaking hands over like a turkey baster full of semen. Oh my god! Which is. Which is exactly what would happen. Exactly. <laughs> I I don't I just I I mean Riku Kitazawa is a whole can of worms on his own, but but the turkey baster I think is a good maybe a good explanation for what happened with how 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 Kadeko came into existence. Yeah, I don't want to think about him not understanding what's happening. Because he clearly doesn't. Oh, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah. This is also where we're going to take some time to talk about. There was an awful live action that decided to gloss over everything gay, create a Mary Sue oh. character, and Ono's very important fear of women, which is only thinly veiled misogyny. We have a note on that. Is just completely written out. But is that right? Wait, let me just... Because there's a drama series too, I think. No. Yeah, so... Uh... 
So there was a live action that came out in 2001 that stripped away all of the LGBT stuff. Oh, okay. And then there was like another one that came out oh, later. My, yeah, because wait, there's because there's Antique, which yes. is a Japanese 2001 adaptation. That's yes. a series. I have not seen that one. Yes, and, uh, and I have Baker seen Boys with a tie. Yeah, no, but I've seen the Korean one, which is called Antique yes. Bakery, which came out in 2008. So that's the one I've seen. And then I remember reading about Baker Boys, which came out in 2021, which is yes. which is Thai. And I'm afraid yeah. that I'll have to watch that now because... Uh, right. So there was a live to... action in 2001 uh, hmm. where literally... So we talking... Yes, we've yes. been talking about different live actions this whole time, actually. We have. So there is a 2001 live action where uh, there are no more depictions of same-sex romance or LGBT themes. Uh, ono is no longer afraid of women. And there is a dumb female self-insert character who Ono decides to go for that isn't Chikage. But why? <laughs> because it was 2001 in Japan. But then why even see this is me this is me this is 2003 me coming back to scream why even make the live action then I don't have answers for you Corolla. <laughs> uh, why So there is a, so we have to talk about that awful one because that was one of I remember one of my earliest examples of like oh Japan does have a problem with with gay people <laughs> because I had immersed myself in gayish looking media so I didn't really think that there was a problem with this. And then it's like, oh, there's a version of Antique Bakery where none of it's gay. So it's not Antique Bakery. You've it's, it's, it's not what it is. Like, what's the point then? Yeah. No, I can't, I can't remember the Korean movie. I think it it's slightly gay, but I do. Because again, what, the only things I remember from that is, you know, how mm -hmm. it traumatized me because it's full of my phobia, which is like, listen, there was literally one scene in the entire manga. Why did you have to make it a recurring theme in the movie? What is wrong with you? First of all, fuck you. Second, I remember being like, I guess if you tilt your head in the right direction, it can be gay, maybe. I can't remember it. I own it, so I could probably watch it again. I just don't know if I want to. Valid. For, for science, uh, I might, just to compare. Valid. Let's also go ahead and put in uh, Ono's fear of women <clears throat> in the bad, because that is also something that has only aged yeah. worse. Uh, so Ono is said to have this fear of women, like in the way that like people fear spiders. Yeah. <laughs> Which, <laughs> but, and this is kind of it's not really explained that well, but it's attributed no. to to his no. mom fucking his teacher and literally yes. everything else that moved that wasn't his dad. Which I guess yes. can make you, you know not like I mean, women and 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 like give you all kinds of issues i suppose right. but but i think one of the big problems with it is how it like naturally taps into the whole oh well all gays hate women or gays are afraid right. of women and i think particularly right. in a lot of like older manga that was a thing that they were like yeah a gay man therefore he's afraid of women which was like what yeah and and especially you know so you're right like in in like the sense of Corolla, are you okay? No, I was just gonna pick something up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, just picking was like, something up. I was like, what happened? Uh, but like, not even just in the sense that like he doesn't like women. He has a fear of them, like spiders. Yeah, uh, he, he has a phobia. He's afraid of. He them. has a phobia of them, and it's played off for laughs. Mm. Um, and then it just gets like equally it just becomes like more and more ridiculous like he has to be interviewed by a woman for like some dumb cake demonstration and he's like psyching himself up to be in the presence of a woman and it's yeah. like this is dumb like it is one of the it is one of the things that I think again like when I saw it I was willing to run with it in like 2010 mm. and the further I'm away from it the more it's like just say he's a misogynist those exist misogynists do exist mm. um there's also a not 
subtle misogyny and the fact that there is this western cake shop that only employs men like there is a lot of very like spicy misogyny that a lot of yoshinaga's work has like yeah. yoshinaga sometimes is like labeled as like this feminist writer <laughs> because of things like oku she's not she is a product of her generation and her time. That's not an excuse, but a lot of her works, especially the minute there's more than two men in it, become incredibly misogynistic. Consider that the only women we meet in Auntie Bakery are dumb newswomen and then a literal sexual predator, Sakurako. <laughs> but there's, I mean, not that that helps on the misogyny, uh, because initially mm. Tachibana wants to, like his vision is to mm. have cute girls at the counter right who wear because these he's uniforms. objectifying them <laughs> yeah because he's objectifying them there are right. I, like in in the manga there are a couple mm -hmm. of other women who appear namely his mom his aunt yes. and and, yes. and ono's sister and at least yes. they seem like kind of well-rounded people but yeah she she's great at having those characters be periphery because like constance yeah who's teacher in the doujins that yoshinaga wrote she is radically important to eiji like mm. they immediately start sleeping with each other she is a much older woman than him and like that relationship i think more than anything shapes who eiji becomes like post series mm. so she's great at having these characters on the fringes but like the minute there's more than like three men in a scene she like <laughs> reverts back to like, this gross misogyny that like just I went through anime misogyny and real life misogyny. I I was there. I process it less and less well the older I get. Mm. Because I yeah, think, in 2000, yes. I think I do kind of like the opposite where I like, mm -hmm. when I was younger, like say 2010, I would m maybe not 2010, maybe like 2007, I would make mm -hmm. excuses, you know, like right. I would excuse the characters. I would excuse right. the behavior. Now I just kind of like, sort of like block it out i just go well product of its time moving yeah. on i'm not gonna i'm not gonna think about it because it's yeah and yeah and like mine is very reflexive it's reflexive because it's me interrogating yeah. that part of me yeah. so like i'm fully acknowledging i probably have a much stronger reaction to this than is necessary his fear of women is supposed to be something that like we write off as a joke and it is mm. a joke because something he quote unquote overcomes in like four episodes like he does his interview with the women and it's like, oh, okay, whatever. But but That's that is also interesting, like that whole setup, because first of all, mm -hmm. it it doesn't really come through in the anime. In the manga, those two reports It's debilitating. Like they are yeah, but they are working for this network that has them yes. like their whole thing is that they are literally just women with huge boobs who are interviewing yes. people. Like, that is the whole selling yes. point of this show, which makes Ono even more terrified because yes. these women are sailing by on their sex appeal. And then yes. the way that this is handled is, like, Ono and Chikage are alone at this exhibition thing. Mm -hmm. And then he does this, you know, he does the hot guy transformation. He removes his glasses. And I can only assume that this makes, because Chikage can't see no. while Blind without sunglasses. Bad. Yeah, he has very, very, very sensitive eyes. And Ono borrows an earring and then he like slicks back his hair and he changes to turn it into it to turn into a 1990s game <laughs> yeah and then and then he's like i don't know if it's because they can't really see each other that well because they both have their glasses off but they do this whole thing where they're like super close with their faces and staring into each other's eyes and all the women go crazy because this is essentially fan service which it is i am one of the women it is me i'm going yeah. crazy i am one of the women in the room yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like crazy but it's like this whole thing where you have the misogyny and then you have the objectification of women but then right. you also have the objectification of the gays because yes. they are objectifying themselves right. to protect themselves from yes. these women it is this whole it's a very and, interesting and scene. that is very yoshinaga like especially mm. if you read the doujins where like literally one of the doujins is uh ono topping tachibana and like you get to the end and it turns out like that's a meta commentary where it's a fanfic written by some like high school girls who visit yeah, yeah, the bakery yeah. <laughs> so, i like, haven't i haven't read them yet but i i did read like a synopsis of all the doujins i am so, going like, to read the ono and chicago ones later because 
they're good they're really really good so like that's also just like very Yoshinaga and again like p- product of the time <clears throat> I get it but like yeah it's just one of those things like the older I get the more I do interrogate this stuff the more I'm aware of how this has perpetuated an air mm. of misogyny in these communities mm. I am more and more harsh with it than yeah. I was in like 2010 <laughs> Yes. Here are some things that are problematic. <laughs> We're going to save Jean Baptiste for last. Let's talk about how abuse is talked about and completely hand waved. I mean, part of that goes into Jean Baptiste, so we'll get to that. But uh, yes. if we remove, why can I hear myself? Why can't you hear yourself? Yeah, that was weird. I think it's okay. That now. was weird. Yeah. No. Hey. Um, one of the one of like we'll just skip the part with the Frenchman for now because he's got his yeah. own point. But there are yeah. some instances of abuse in in the series that, um, mm. like Kaedeko, like her mom hits her a and lot. She, yeah, and she comes running to to the bakery and she's like, "I tried to hug my mom and she hit me," and no one right. does anything. No one does or says anything. It's like, oh, that's that's Sakurako. And it is definitely implied this is not the first time she's been struck. So, so, you know, and they just kind of like hand wave it away. And also later, and and it's kind of hard not to mention Jean Baptiste in this because there is that whole. We're not there yet. No. But I I, want to talk about Tachibana's abuse being hand waved. Yes. Because we, so Tachibana at first is just a sullen fuckboy, which <laughs> I, I love him. He's great. Um, you later find out that he, as a child, was kidnapped, heavily implied to have been sexually assaulted. Or at least that he would be sexually assaulted. Yeah. Um, I think the manga more implicitly says, like, yeah, he was assaulted. The anime does sort of like it may have happened. Mm. Uh, and he spends his captivity being fed cake, which is why he doesn't have a sweet tooth. So he sets up the bakery as like a honey pot trap to flush out the guy that assaulted him. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> and then- what? I have a lot of thoughts on this. I have a bunch of notes on that, but they they are not related to the abuse, so we'll keep those for later. But, But, yeah. Um, So, we reach the end where, spoiler, he does totally meet the guy that abused him. But, but yeah. But he lets him go. And nothing happens. No, but, okay, but I was, because I reread, well, I didn't really read it. I I Mm -hmm. went back and, like, leafed through everything today and like looked at that because it I, I, it didn't make sense to me because also spoiler there are a lot of red herrings okay because at there's some several. point we think that because there's this one dude who keeps coming back and you're like oh he's the guy who did it turns out he's a police officer yeah, but he's there's a literal cop but there's another similar case that's happening so we're kind of being led astray we think that this is the same kidnapper it isn't yeah. He isn't. gets taken down. Yeah. But then, but then there's this weird, because when I think of, also when I think of um, Tachibana's abuse, I think about the way that he spoke to Ono. Yes. And how he, because there's some, there there is some symbolism there, I think, because I tried to make sense of this, because towards the end, they keep flashing back to that scene when he is For, thinking yeah. of, of his abuser. And, and his yeah. kidnapper and i'm like why does this keep happening and i i i think that maybe she's trying to tie it together in some way that he cuz he he says at some point that he didn't want to say those things to ono and he does yeah. apologize to ono at one point although he does, the, only, the only reason he actually apologizes is because Ono says something mean to Chikage and then so he apologizes and then goes now you apologize to Chikage and I'm like okay that is whatever but he I think to me and this is like me trying to reason in five minutes today 
um it seems almost like he's trying to like because i think he knows that that's the guy that comes to the bakery at the end and then he lets him go because he flashes back again to the scene with ono and then he's like okay but i didn't want to say those things to ono so i'm thinking is he like trying to reason that that guy didn't want to do this to him because he let him go because you're not my son just go after he stabbed him in the thigh and I, I don't just, I, know. I don't know what to make of it. It's and they imply that like the reason why he's so like openly homophobic to Ono is because of mm. being kidnapped and abused. Yeah. Which we don't have time to talk about that. We don't have time to unpack that. <laughs> Good thing we have a live. Yeah, but like there's a lot of abuse that's just hand waved away, mm. which is why I preface by saying that this is a sojo that follows sojo tropes. And mm. that was very prevalent in sojo. Yeah. Is we're just not going to talk about this rampant abuse. This is fine. <laughs> this is totally fine. Um, we also need to talk about Ono's nickname, which is the gay of demonic charm. Which is one of those things that I feel like in group is hilarious. Yes. But it feeds into that trope of the predatory gay where Mm -hmm. Ono's like entire personality is that he loves flipping men. He loves like sleeping with especially straight men to flip them gay. Um, That's like a thing that he does. Yeah. And Um, he is apparently irresistible. Utterly irresistible. Every single cake shop and bakery in Japan has fired him because he keeps fucking everyone. He becomes the most 1990s stereotype of a gay man down to the leather jacket, single earring, and slicked back hair. And I mean, he he is beautiful in that scene. I just he's great. He looks like a navel (laughs) painting. Like he is the 1990s gay. Um, and that's something that again, like in group. That that person exists. Yeah. Most queer people probably have known or know that person. And it is problematic. And we deal with that individually. Mm. So it's one of those things that like I can imagine in group at first was very, very tantalizing. And it was, you know, being, you know, 20 years old coming into my own. Yeah, it was amazing to flip girls. <laughs> But in hindsight, that's not how sexuality works. And you shouldn't approach it like that. No. Like, it's mean, definitely a part of, yeah. No, but like me reading this for the first time now in my 30s, mm-hmm. like immediately the moment I fell in love with Ono is when he refers to himself as the gay of demonic charm. I'm like, I love this right. man. Right. I, lo- same. Like, I love this man. I love this disaster. Yeah, but you do see how it's problematic because it's right. perpetuating this stereotype and right. this idea. And and this is also, uh, I just remembered, so I'm going to mention it before I forget it again, because this is also Please. mentioned later when um, with a different guy, because uh, Ono has an ex-boyfriend who uh, he does. breaks up with because of Chicago. And Probably. he meets and he meets him again at the same yes. bar and he has a new guy and they seem super lovey-dovey but then they slip mm-hmm. into conversation that they are not the kind of sunshine gays who walk in the parades and like they literally make it a big point that we are promiscuous we don't yeah. do the whole we're not monogamous we don't do the parade things because we're not that kind of gays we're not like the other gays and i'm over here like that is your prerogative but yeah and and again, like, I I mean, I, I feel gross saying in-group, out-group. It's one of those things that, like, in-group, we know those people. Yeah. We know those people who have no desire to be a part of pride parades, just want to do poppers and suck dick. And, which, like, we, we know those people. Some of us have been those people. <laughs> like, <laughs> so it's, so it's hard to judge. But it's just one of those things, like, especially as, we're facing this sort of, you know, we're going back to this very like lavender scare backlash of queer people. And that is a major concern that straight people have is that like we're predatory werewolves out trying to snatch poor, innocent straight people off the streets. Yeah. And depictions like that add to that. Exactly. So, so 
again, it's just one of those things that just the further it goes on, the worse it ages. Because yeah, in 2010, right there with you. This is hilarious. I know that guy. I have been that guy. Yeah. But in 2023, where we're fully going back to like lavender scare, gay people are losing their jobs, trans people are facing a medical genocide, like that has aged like milk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that like, rhetoric is dangerous. And like no one is saying, because I feel like we shouldn't, we don't really need to make these disclaimers because it's, it's right. the always shelf. I think everyone knows where we stand. Like, right. There, because we're not like we're not calling for you know a puritanian rinse like we don't not at all like it's okay that these characters exist and i love the yeah. messy gays it's just that because you you know like you say the in group out group if you're from the mm -hmm. out group this perpetuates a stereotype that they want mm -hmm. so that they can say mm -hmm. that this is bad and right. that's why it's problematic not because the character yes. himself is inherently pro problematic right. but because of the associations Exactly, because let's be realistic, at least for me, characters I related to in Antique Bakery, of course, was Tachibana, and then I related a lot to Ono. Like, that is solid representation for a good amount of queer people. Yeah. Because it is messy, because it is imperfect, because, you know, again, like, especially in the West, everyone goes through that phase of, like, Oh, I love flipping people. I mean, we we canceled a whole ass James Charles over it. I mean, I didn't because I, I yeah I wasn't there. I was I was <laughs> yeah, part I, of it. I, yeah, I wasn't, stay, I wasn't I'm there. staying away. Yeah, I I wasn't. A part I'm too of that old. I, I'm also too old. I just started watching Nikki tutorials. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck's going on. I don't know any of these people. Uh, I don't. I just I love Jeffrey Star in a Walmart. It's my favorite video. Uh, okay. It's been an hour and 16 minutes and we need to talk about um, Jean-Baptiste Jean Heavens. The the worst Frenchman that has ever Frenchman. Yeah, he's pretty bad. So Jean-Baptiste shows up with a literal bouquet the size of three small children of red roses, um, saunters in to the antique, proclaims his love for Ono, uh, Ono is very like non plus. He's like, oh, a man is here. <laughs> I mean, he's Tachibana, seen a lot of those. Yeah. Tachibana immediately becomes like a bird where all of his feathers go up. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck is this? Chikage doesn't have a thought in his brain, he's just in the background. Eiji doesn't care until Ono says, Oh, this was the person who taught me how to bake. Uh, you know, he is my teacher, and we also like used to be a thing. Like he says that very like casually, because again, Jean Baptiste walks in, grand gesture, everyone is surprised, but oh no, that yeah. should have been thirteen red flags right there. Ag, those then, roses are the red flags, Amanda. Like yeah, that he's literally carrying a bouquet of red flags. Ag <laughs> <laughs> um, then threatens to throw himself at Jean Baptiste, to which Ono does say, please don't say that. He will fuck you. <laughs> and then interestingly, uh when when Jean Baptiste and Tachibana go into their piss contest, like their, their pissing their contest. Their French dick measuring contest. <laughs> yeah. Uh the the Ono is like, oh, could it be they don't like each other because their personalities the are too exact similar. Same. Yeah, they're, they're the exact same. Yeah. Uh I think I like Tachibana better. Still Wow, brave <laughs> statements on the Yowie show. I know, right? <laughs> brave, controversial statement here on Come the Come at me, bro. <laughs> uh, Chicago is still in the background of having a thought behind those eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jean yeah. Baptiste, he will have thoughts. <laughs> it, takes him f it takes him 20 minutes, but he does have a thought. Uh, I love it. Uh, alone. <laughs> Jean Baptiste is like, oh no. I'm opening up a bunch of new hotel bakeries. You should come back to France with me. I can pay you an exorbitant amount of money. And then Ono does the other 90s, 2000s gay trope of being in love with fashion and immediately wanting an Hermes bag. Yeah. And then and then Tachibana <laughs> pretends to 
uh, not really care and tells the others, yeah. don't panic. Hachi, we have, yeah. we have to Bara, let Odo make his own decisions. Right. Turns into a high school sundire and starts <laughs> treating Ono like shit in hopes that Ono then will think that he really cares. But uh, it's so funny because he's like, he tells AG, we need to let Ono handle this. And then he goes yes. outside and calls his mom to check out the money. In a panic, <laughs> saying, where is my money? <laughs> How can I get it back? I need this. I need this homosexual. I need so to buy John this ba man a bag. So he will I, need, I need to get him a purse. Please help me. <laughs> but so, unfortunately, uh, they're broke. So. Yeah, unfortunately, they're broke. Uh, ono leaves and goes home, carrying the giant bouquet of red flags. And Jean-Baptiste finds his apartment. Another and red flag. <laughs> <laughs> and follows him in they have sex and oh no goes through what i think is one of the best examples of being in an abusive relationship yeah he analogizes it to being in a french film where they fall in love have sex break up and then fall in love again and it is this consistent cycle of abuse that oh no doesn't break until as we see relatively recently and it creates so he I love Jean Baptiste because he did this thing that a lot of characters that were like him during that era didn't. You are openly not supposed to sympathize with him. He dead ass says, I am a violent man. I am more likely to raise my fist before I raise my voice. Mm. He lays it all on the table. I'm not saying that makes it okay. I'm not saying that makes it, you know, valid. But it gives Ono more agency every time Jean-Baptiste hits him and he keeps getting up. But meanwhile, Ono literally tells Tachibana and the others, he's not that bad. That bad. He's not like that. Right. Well, no, he doesn't downplay the physical abuse. He's like, no. oh, yeah, he's punched me a bunch of times. But... Like that's just that's court that's foreplay for them. <laughs> and too again, it's one of those things where, but they're European and they have a temper. No. Yeah, he's French. Of course, he's a rapist. <laughs> oh. uh, right. So, you know, yeah, Ono is very blunt about talking. Like, oh yeah, he beat the fuck out of me multiple times. That's actually why I left. He landed me in the hospital, and you're you're confronted with a situation that like is toxic on every side and it i feel like in an earlier series or with a worse writer they would have kept trying to frame jean baptiste as like this flawed but overall nice guy mm -hmm. you are never ever meant to look at him and be like maybe ono should go to france <sighs> no and as a lover of trash men I do stand. <laughs> he is my favorite. He's voiced by Kazuhiko Inoue. He looks like France from Axis Powers Italia, except there's more non-con. You know, when you put it like this, it, it makes sense that you would stand him. You shut your whore mouth. <laughs> You shut your whore mouth. I I'm not convinced. For me, the only the only winning the only winning element is uh, Kazuki yeah. Inoue, and even then, um, yeah. uh, it's a so, no from me. So fast forward, uh, Tachibana offers to pay Ono as much money as he physically can get and sleep with him if Ono will stay. And Ono's like, "That's really nice. I'm still kind of on the fence, though." <laughs> <laughs> Goes back to Jean Baptiste. Jean he finally tells Jean Baptiste, "Hey, I kind of like things here in Japan. Also, didn't you beat the shit out of me last time we were together?" And Jean Baptiste responds by beating the shit out of him again and threatening to break his wrist, which he needs for work. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, and then Chicago's brain cells finally fire because <laughs> Ono comes in late and doesn't answer his phone. So Chikage, who had not had a thought for 20 <laughs> minutes, finally neuron activation happens. But and is only like, 
only after Tachibana says that he's gonna go check on Ono, yeah. and then Chikage's like, I'm coming with you. Tachibana's right. like, no, you're not. No. And he's like, yes, I am. Like, yes, I am. <laughs> this so is my man. 20, <laughs> it's been 21 minutes, and Chikage has not had a thought. <laughs> but Eiji comes in and says, Ono's not here, and nothing is made, and he's not answering his phone. And Chikage is like, oh, fuck. <laughs> He he thinks for the first time in 20 minutes. Uh, they find John Baptiste looming over Ono like a fucking bird of prey. It is and a beautifully framed shot. In a very terrifying way. Yeah, Ono is on the floor. He's beat up and bloodied and terrified because, you know, he's he's literally threatening to break his arm so he can't, right. his wrist, and so he can't you work see- again. Brief flashes of repentance from Jean Baptiste because that's what abusers do. Mm-hmm. Is there are brief moments of oh shit, I really did hit the fuck out of you. Oh, <laughs> but if you just go with me to France, yeah, but also if you just go with me to France, I won't have to hit you again. Oh, <laughs> so, so Tachibana and Chikage roll up, nothing happens. Jean Baptiste, I guess, for whatever reason, finally sees the error of his ways after 40 years. And is like, I guess through the Care Bear power of love and friendship, I'm going to now <laughs> stop being an abuser and leave. But also, Chicago does try to break John Baptiste's hand, and then Ono stops him, and he's like, "You can't do that." He because- literally <laughs> has not had a thought for 21 <laughs> minutes, and his first reaction is, "I'm going to fuck up this Frenchman in a way that is legally assault." <laughs> Which I love that for him. Like defend your also, man. Like yeah, yeah. that's your man. Save him. And then, but yeah. this, but this is where again the hand waving comes in for me. No yes. pun intended, since people are breaking each other's hands over here. But well, a lot of breaking but, hands. But literally, Ono says that you can't do that, and you'll understand yeah. when you try his pastries. So he takes them to John Baptiste's bakery so they can eat his desserts so they can understand why he's not such a bad guy. <laughs> and then everyone really? just kind of forgives him. Yeah, and it's really just... someone who makes a Mont Blanc like that can't be a rapist <laughs> and abuser. I mean, he literally beat you to a pulp 15 minutes ago, but a Mont right, like, Blanc like that? No. Yeah, but a Mont Blanc like that, I guess I'll take being pushed down the stairs. <laughs> That's a sticker. That's... <laughs> For enough, for enough Mont Blancs, I guess you can push me down a staircase. Oh my god! I'll just tell everyone I walked into a door. It's fine. Have you I'll tried? Tell to everyone I walked into a door, eyeball first. Oh god! You can't and say that comes- in front of my son AJ and his detached retina. And he comes back with a sling and is like fully beaten up, and AJ's just like, "What the fuck happened?" It is because they just left. They just left Eiji alone. <laughs> Eiji's just <laughs> they leave Eiji yeah. like a child being left in the car while you go get groceries, <laughs> which you could do in the nineties, early two yeah, thousands. By yeah. the way, people so did that all the time. Like they leave a, a dog in the car with the windows down and their favorite music. Check in the fair, though, Eiji does live in the apartment above the bakery. Yeah, he's fine. Like it, it's like the it is it's literally like those memes of like dogs and like cars, and it's like the air conditioning is on and he has on his favorite music. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally like he's, he's got fine. croissants and everything. He's good. Yeah, he's great. Uh, and then yeah, so they taste Jean Baptiste's pastries. That is not a euphemism, and they're like, oh wow. I guess someone who made a Madeline like that can't be all bad. And then Jean Baptiste packs up all of the abuse in non-con and goes back to France to become a millionaire because he faces no consequences. The end. I mean, no, but <laughs> the, end of, the end of that, of that part. And of mind you, mind you, this happens in one episode. Yeah. And this is, this isn't even the final volume. This is volume three of the manga. So there's still a whole ass murder plot to uncover. <laughs> it's just <laughs> happens in episode for the sake of it, six. Do you realize that I because I literally just read this. This is this is this is volume three of the manga. So this is the first part of volume three, and the second half is you know Sakurako and yes. Kaneko. Like <laughs> yes. 
So this is episode six yeah. of a 12 episode anime. <laughs> this is your mid season break. <laughs> <laughs> what a break it is. It broke Literally, me. Lots of breaks. <laughs> several Up several <laughs> bones are broken. <laughs> but I I love and stand Jean Baptiste because Yoshinaga was willing to make such an attractive character objectively bad. I'm having this discussion right now um, with Knives and Trigun because there's a lot of people who are talking about Stampede and is like, oh, well, in Stampede, a lot of Knives' motivations make more sense. Of course he hates humanity. Of course he doesn't trust people. They're using the plants. While versus the 98 version, he murders Rem because he feels like it. So... It does, and he's objectively a bad guy. He is objectively a terrible guy, and it makes Vash a more complex character because Vash lets him be a murderer for 150 years because Knives killed his girlfriend. <laughs> so he left his neurotic Chihuahua without his CBD for 150 <laughs> years and didn't want to confront Knives until Knives started murdering people close to him. So. It was brave to take a character that I feel like in any other series, they would have tried harder mm. to make us sympathize with him. Because even though they do that stupid heel turn at the end where it's like, oh, his pastries are good. I guess he can't be a rapist. Uh, <laughs> you are still very much rooted in the fact that none of that is okay. And you realize, yeah. like you close the book and you're like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Yeah. Yeah. You are that. never you are never sucked in enough to be like, ah yes, I would also like a boyfriend like Jean Baptiste <laughs> without realizing the weight of what you said. Because when I was 20 years old, I said, I don't care if he pushed me down a staircase. I'm just gonna, you know, throw it out there. When he has broken your hand. How are you going to carry that Hermes bag around? You're going to put it around the sling? <laughs> You're going to get an Hermes sling? Hermes sling! You want an Hermes cast? My boyfriend paid for this. It's Gucci. Yeah, <laughs> like... yeah this, is my, this is my Birkin leg cast. Oh, <laughs> oh no. This is, this is my Louboutin. This is my Louboutin <laughs> eye patch. <laughs> Let's oh, be realistic, no. though. If that was the case, Ono would be like, "Yeah, sure." Oh yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. Like at the very least, he he wants an an LV eye patch to make up yeah, for that. Yeah, like, he, listen. yeah. Listen, give him a Moschino arm sling, an L <laughs> a, a Yves Saint Laurent boot, and a Birkin <laughs> arm sling. Yeah, I mean, he's gonna be the most fashionable crippled person it's like okay all of his bones are broken yeah, all of his bones at, are broken look at all of bad. these brands yeah, but look at how all these non-congruent unmatching brands <laughs> oh my god but that oh, again no. is something that only gets worse the longer we take it away from yeah because yeah. again with the way that we view optics and media now even though that is a very, very strong choice to make Jean-Baptiste objectively bad. There is still a lot of that abusive relationship that to unseasoned readers feels like really hand wavy. And yeah. as a victim and survivor of abuse, sometimes that's how it is. <laughs> like, you know the stakes immediately of what you're doing and it is an active choice to go back every single time and i think newer readers might not be able to appreciate that level of nuance um and that makes me sad because yeah we're seeing that with stampede right now where we're trying to make a genocidal phallic plant deity into a sympathetic character mm -hmm. When he was never supposed to be. Mm. You are never supposed to look at Million Knives. And be like. Ah oh, yes. Anti-hero. You are never meant to look at Jean-Baptiste Heavens. And be like. Ah oh, yes. Husband material. <laughs> no. And if you do. It's because you know how bad that is. 
me. Yeah. Yeah. You. <laughs> me. Me. I, I, I am the one who is the problem. <laughs> Hi, I'm the problem. Hi. Yeah, it's hi, me. I'm the problem. It's me. Uh, <laughs> things that we both love. Uh, we left this blank, but I also feel like it's been an hour and 34 minutes. Uh, to me, Antique Bakery is always going to be the most emblematic series of here is something that is truly about everything mm -hmm. and all of it succeeds well. And it ends open enough to where you can draw a ton of different conclusions. Mm -hmm. You can think about things in a bunch of different ways. There is, for 12 episodes and four volumes, these characters are radically changed by the end of it. Mm -hmm. That amount of character growth we didn't get in 200 episodes of Naruto. Listen, you don't have to come for me so hard. What? <laughs> We didn't get that much character development in 500 episodes of One Piece. I can't speak to that. I've never watched One Piece. Like, this is a concise series. Mm. There is a radical amount of character growth and change that happens in a very short amount of time. Again, the episode with Jean-Baptiste is halfway through the series. <gasps> that is your mid-season break. Yeah. And I, I mean, you just don't see series like that anymore where everything is a reboot, everything is a sequel, everything is a, oh, well, we need a prologue retelling of these two characters that were never in the same frame. Or we're just going to keep retelling the same story of Naruto. We're just going to keep redoing the same episodes with flashier graphics. Naruto. Listen. <laughs> I I personally nasty cough you got there. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> it's awful. <sighs> Sansei heard me talking shit. <laughs> yeah, he literally just came in through the window um to Why join. Is the window open? Because so he can go in and out. That's how you know I'm an American. The concept of having an open window is like, what? <laughs> That's how you I know mean, that I'm not just an American, but also a Texan. Like, you leave your windows open? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is a slight chance that the badger will come in, um, which would be <laughs> awful in every way. But I had forgotten about the badger! I have not. It is the... <laughs> Deus Ex Badger! <laughs> Oh my god. Girl, what did you love about Antique Bakery? That is in Chicago, my love. <laughs> my I mean, that's the love of my life. Listen, no, he's, he's pretty good. Like everything you said, really. I mean, it's such a, it's such a, um, like it has it all, really, you know? It like, really I, does. and I really, really do enjoy the true crime element of it. I really love how, you know, like you have this you know, found mm. family, like this bunch of misfits running this right. bakery and coming together as a family by the end, while right. also having this unsolved crime running in the background and and <laughs> everything. But I mean, obviously, obviously, I mean, you, you've been so profound and eloquent and, you know, explaining why it's so good. And I'm just over here, like, listen. Kate is nice. <laughs> Listen, the romance between Ono and Chicago, and I wanted them to be endgame so bad. And I they are. Just like, I mean, they are, but like, they there's, are. it's. What, what do you mean? I want no. more. No, because. I mean, like, they fuck a lot in the doujins. Yeah, but I haven't read those yet. Uh, I mean, yeah, they have plenty of sex in the doujins. Don't yeah, worry about that. Because if, because you know, if you look at the like, like at the manga, they, because they do that whole thing. Like there are two scenes that absolutely break my heart in 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 the manga. The one is when Ag thinks that Ono is going to send him to France, and because he, he has like they all have trauma, and Ag's trauma is you know the whole he has abandonment issues. He you know he was an orphan. He's so afraid of being sent off to France, and he just has this complete meltdown. And I was like, oh my baby, like. It's such a, it's such a, it's such a powerful scene with him just sobbing uh, to Ono on the kitchen floor. But then there's the scene when Ono's ex-boyfriend comes into the bakery because he's, 
heard that Ono brought Chikage to the bar. This is when yes. they got drunk and they almost did it, but they didn't because Chikage yes. is a consent king. And 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 Ono tries to defend himself to this at this point, not yet ex-boyfriend, with we didn't do anything. And Chicago is like, that meant nothing to you. Like, didn't we weren't we together? Didn't we dance in the rain? Didn't we almost <laughs> didn't we dance in the rain like two homosexuals in the 1990s? <laughs> exactly and he's like he's so dense but i love him so much and and then but then they like you know and it sort of comes to this thing where where ono admits that yeah we were together we did all those things but then it kind of like the manga doesn't explore their relationship further so it leaves it kind of no. open but then yes. the doujins exist but yeah, yeah I, and then I, the doujins exist and they just fuck each other's brains out for like 100 I just, pages really 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 enjoy the romance and like and the true crime and the case yeah. <laughs> yeah because you're right like they do have this like radical sojo moment of like falling mm. in love with each other like instantly and ono for whatever reason has never looked hotter than being drenched by the rain and there's that scene you know when when because uh, immediately Ono thinks that Chicago is hot and he's not wrong. But then Chicago takes his sunglasses off and Ono's and like, And then he's double hot. Oh no, he's my type. And there's like the arrow to the chest. Literally. And, and I was like, Same, same. Yep. Literally me. <laughs> like, I and love I, them. I love them so much. And I remain here firmly on the side that there is not a universe. Where Tachibana and Chikage did not roll in the hay at least once. I agree. I think that. I mean, at one point, Chikage literally says that it's like they're a male, male husband and wife couple because Correct. they lived with him for a while. <laughs> and it's like, also, and they have... he moves, he moves 100 meters down, like down the street. <laughs> he's so cute. And he's like heartbroken. Oh, God. I love Who him. Who will be able to help the young master if he has nice mirrors oh we also d neglected to mention tachibana's fabulous pajamas oh yeah there's some excellent pajamas in this series <laughs> <laughs> some great old money pajamas and also like you know when because when ono and chikage are out drinking and they almost do it and then they don't and then chikage runs because i guess his 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 manservant senses we're tingling because Tachibana's yes. having a nightmare. So he just yeah. runs home and through the door and like, I'm here, young master. Don't worry. And I'm like, what just happened? Right. They're, they're, they're psychic linked to each other. Like it's fucking loveless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <it's> the... <clears throat> is this worth picking up? Yes. 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 Yeah, Read definitely. It. Absolutely. Watch the anime. Like, just do it. It's 12 episodes. If you don't like it, you don't like it. But like, I... I think it's right, whatever level is just under Criterion, because I feel like there are other works by Yoshinaga that are Criterion, like Oku, obviously Criterion Collection, but like whatever is just under Criterion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like to me, Oku is in that vein of like, you cannot say you're an anime and manga fan and you have not at least mm -hmm. experienced Oku. Um, but whatever is like just under that level that especially because this highlights so well what BL was, which was just gay shoujo. Mm. It was shoujo with no women. <laughs> <laughs> and that transition from what we knew as BL and Yaoi to it truly ha being a genre that stood on its own. Mm. I think this is one of the most important works for that because Yoshinaga to this day does not call this a BL or Yaoi. Even the doujins, she doesn't call them that. It is still a sojo that happens to have male-male romance queer yeah. themes. And it's the same with uh, What Did You Eat Yesterday, which is still mm -hmm. ongoing. She doesn't it label it as a BL. Yeah. Because it isn't. But it, th it, but it, it has isn't. a gay couple... Like, the gay couples right. are at the center, but it's not a BL. And, you know, now we think that's weird. But we've mentioned this with tags, tagging, and I think some other episodes as well, that, like, a lot of the BL trap is, is that we're looking for BL where BL isn't. Mm. So, like, your gay sports anime comes to mind. Like, we're looking for BL in Free. Free's not BL. It's gay, 
but it's gay, it's but it's not BL. But it's similar. So, like, I don't want to go on on a whole ass tangent right at the end here, but I no. will briefly, okay. very briefly. Yes. Because I've ratted about this before and, and, and I keep seeing, like, I tweeted about this the other day. Like, all BL is gay, mm -hmm. but not all gay content is BL. And this mm -hmm. is a very important distinction. And I see now with, you know, the incredible influx of live action BL that we are getting that people don't understand the difference. And then mm -hmm. you get the Heartstopper is BL. Young Royals yeah. is BL. No, yeah. it's not. It no, it's isn't. Not. It's because, not. Because, and it's like, it's that there's nothing wrong with it not being BL. There's nothing wrong mm -hmm. with something being BL or not being BL but they're not the same <laughs> okay so remember how we talked about voice actors very very briefly yes so Ono's voice actor yes did he sound familiar to you yes and I think I know I think I know Wait. I, I don't think you're ready for this okay first Hit big role James in Pokemon yes Wait, but I looked him up. Uh, what a Hana in Bleach. <laughs> Toya in Subasa Reservoir Chronicles. But they're also there was another one. And Taki Aizawa. No. <laughs> and then right. Roy Mustang in Brotherhood. See, see, this is the thing. Because this is one thing that I have literally blocked out of my head. The fact that Taki Aizawa and James. Are the same? It's no. In right eyes on brotherhood. Fix your ass up. This is the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he also plays that asshole in the first episode of Naruto Mizuki. Yes. Of course he does. I knew that because that makes sense to me. Because Taki Aizawa. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Oh my god. What? <laughs> Cause I was like, I feel like I've heard this man before. Of course I have. Of course you have, but like they all have these massive yeah. <laughs> massive lists of, of like names associated to them. Like there are so many. It's Taki Aizawa. This is the best day of my life. It would be. You would oh, say that. Listen. Oh. Listen. They're both absolutely trash and I love them. Oh my god, this list is so long. Half yeah. of this list is Pokemon credits. Yeah, <laughs> half of this list is Pokemon credits. Um No, I've also, definitely heard him in a The voice record. for Tachibana is the Japanese dub of Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr., which I don't like having that knowledge. Um, so <laughs> Is, is this worth picking up? Absolutely. I advocate yeah. anime first, just so you get to see all the glossy, beautiful cakes. I think the sound design is amazing. I think the voice acting, obviously, we just had a fucking meltdown over the voice acting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the voice acting is great. Um, there is not an English dub of this, and I don't want one. What? You don't? No, I I, I don't no, want one either. I don't want Would you Krista Bot, Kyle A. Bear fucking Yuri Lowenthal trying to <laughs> be these characters. No. It would be I interesting. I mean, I, 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 you know how I feel about dubs. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, it would be interesting, like a French dub, just for the... I would love a French dub. I would love a French <laughs> dub. But yeah, I don't want fucking Yuri Lowenthal, Kyle Aber, Chris Sabat. No, I don't want these 50-year-old white men <laughs> trying to play Asian twinks. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. No. Uh, you already so, have the literal creme de la creme. Like, don't don't mess with it. Literally, yeah, it's literally a perfect uh, voice cast. Do not fuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Corolla, would you like to tell the listeners at home what we are doing next month, which is October? Yes, there is absolutely no sensitive way of saying this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's time for the villain fucker special. Wait, wait, no, it's not. No, Keiji Fujiwara died. What? <laughs> what does that have to do with? Vi no, I was. I just. Caught, I finally finished reading the article. It's like, oh, he's dead. What article?
Michael, what are you talking about? I was on his IMBD. The guy who voiced Tachibana is dead. He died of cancer. Oh, no. Yeah, and then you laugh. No. <laughs> I, it's yeah. a shock reaction. I'm sorry. No, I, was, I remember that, actually. I don't it's remember like... reading that. Oh, my God. But, yeah, we're, uh, it is October. We're celebrating October by doing the Villain Fucker special. Because we have... Uh... What better way to continue this thread than talking about some more horrible men? Ooh, I, you know, I feel like this has been a long time coming. You think? Uh, sh can I help you with something? <laughs> Is there no. something that I can assist you with? No. Not unless um, you have uh, some of these villains on speed dial. No. I would be too powerful. <laughs> this is also going to be particularly funny because our poll for Halloween closes soon. And I think... I think. I haven't checked it in a week. I just uh, checked. <laughs> okay. Are we still in the We're same? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. If you haven't voted yet, do it. Yes. No. Uh, or not. Or not. Vote for the right. <laughs> Vote for the no. right option. I was trying to rig an election on our own Patreon. <laughs> it's our Patreon. We can do whatever the hell we want. <laughs> But speaking of, if you would like to uh, contribute to the show and to vote on our Halloween costumes, you can do so at patreon.com slash the Yowie Shelf, where there are uh, bonus exclusives. Clearly, these videos are not demonetized because I spent several minutes talking about how I am okay being non-conned by a fictional Frenchman. And it's not going to get any better next month, for sure. <laughs> it will not improve. In fact, it gets worse. <laughs> get ready uh <laughs> To me, for me talking about 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 Shigaragi's hands for for at least thirty minutes. <laughs> See, and it's so frustrating because I have no place to judge within <laughs> no, you, that series. You really don't. <laughs> but I feel so indignant every time you say it. Like I have no high ground here. <laughs> None. <laughs> I am subterranean. I have no high ground in the increasingly sketchy men from my hero that I would fuck. But whenever you say you think Shigaraki is attractive, I want to puff up like a fucking bird and be like you and your garbage tastes. Yeah, which is honestly coming from the right person but also <laughs> while we are on the subject of our patreon if you would yes. like to warm up to you know do a little warm up for the villain fucker special subscribe to our patreon and go back and watch our our fuck marry kill <laughs> oh the cinnamon Episode? roll murder olympics yeah the cinnamon roll murder olympics and the one with the terrible terrible men because I think that's where the Shigaraki thing or originated. No, the Shigaraki thing originated because of you and Peachy both simping over Shigaraki during the problematic content episode. And I'm just in the corner dying. Okay, fine. But Peachy also agreed with me, as I recall. And you both that... are entitled to your wrong opinion. <laughs> Peachy, back you... me up. No, do not back <laughs> No. <laughs> And again, me with my literal charred remains of a boyfriend. But I also like the charred remains. Like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not picky. Maybe we can meet in the middle ground, and the charred remains and the hand fetish should kiss. Yeah, I would, I would love that. <laughs> I don't like the way you look. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> like, are you surprised that I've thought of that before? Like, you don't think no. that that that's crossed that my crossed mind ever? Mind. Oh my god, I have thought about that. Maybe a little too much. <laughs> it's like when I'm not when I'm not thinking about Miritama, I'm over here like, okay, but what? That is such a radical shift because at least none of the pairings I like are wholesome. I'm either on Toto Sest Mountain or, <laughs> or use the sketchiest old man Jiran to fuck anything that moves. At least I consistently stay trapped. <laughs> And then I'm over here like you're over here I... with Ten Ten and a hentai monster, and then Dobby Shig. <laughs> I'm over here on Toto Sest Mountain. Like, what the fuck is going on down there? It's like I've got my cinema rolls in one corner, and then this absolute this trash horrible pairing. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I'm like the Grinch on fucking Toto Sest Mountain. Like, what the fuck is that bitch doing down there? <laughs> Have a great time. That's what I'm, I'm enjoying myself so much. So these are why these videos aren't monetized. So if you'd like to support the show, you can do so on Patreon. Patreons also get exclusive merch behind the scenes looks and ability to vote on our Halloween costumes. Uh, you can find us all over social media at the Yowie Shelf, including Blue Sky. Blue Sky. Uh, we are working on being more active there. Again, we are not abandoning Twitter. Elon Musk can take that from our cold, dead hands. I'm never but leaving. It is good to have a backup. Yeah, I'm never leaving. But it is always good to have a backup. So we will start including links to our blue sky in our card. Uh, so we are doing our best to be more active there. Um, it is hard when, like, literally all of the sites that you use resist schedulers. Oh, yeah. So I we're trying our best. We're never trying to ignore a platform. We are two people with severe mental illness. <laughs> In a trench coat. Yeah. We are, we are two severely mentally ill people in the same trench coat. Oh my god. It's just like Antique Bakery. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. Just with less cake. Yeah, just a, a trauma, a literal trauma ship. <laughs> trauma bond. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Thank you yes. all for listening. And Thank we will see you. you in the next one. Bye. Bye.